So now we've got everything ready to do a reinstall. Again, a reminder, on my race bike, I do this after every race weekend. And if you do it that regularly, obviously on a, on a track bike, it's just gonna be a quick clean like this is, put it back together, put the thing back on the bike, job done. So it won't take you long at all. If you wait 8,000 miles like Mr. Williams did, our esteemed producer, then it's gonna take a long time. It's gonna take a couple hours. You've gotta soak it in simple green, let that bed in, and then go after it very carefully with the toothbrush so you don't ruin the, the seals inside behind the piston and go at it. Now, if you leave it too long, the pistons will actually get pitted and so they won't go backwards and forwards properly. And then you've got permanent damage where you need to go in and have the dealership replace everything. So let's rebuild the caliper, get this together, and then go ahead and put the new pads in. Okay, now we've got basically everything clean, ready to go, the caliper's hung. What we did and what we wanna show you is on this particular pad that we took off, the OEM pad, there are cuts in the pad material. Now the reason there are cuts in this material is that it allows heat to dissipate. So for a street pad, you don't wanna aggregate a ton of heat. You just want enough heat for the material to bind to the rotor so that the bike breaks and stops. But on this pad that we're using that is track specific from performance friction, and they do also of course have street pads, this is a carbon metallic pad. Now that requires a ton of heat to be built up in the brake pad for it to work well. And even more so if you have a pure carbon pad. Until you get heat, they just don't work. So these are completely a no-no for the street. This is a track focus pad only. The other thing that we did as well, you can see here, there are no cuts in this to dissipate heat because this pad needs heat. So we want it to retain as much heat as possible. And one other word here when we do this, generally if you change pads from OEM to another brand, if you have the ability to do it, take the rotors off and have them sandblasted. So the old pad material is removed from the rotor and then these will bed in correctly to the rotor if you have the capability to do that. If not, there's a definite bed in procedure for brakes and new pads so that you get them right and you don't ruin the pad when you do that, but we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Okay, now we're ready for reassembly. We've made sure that all the componentry is absolutely spotless. There's no oil grease anywhere on our fingers, hands. There's no rags around with any of that, and that is absolutely critical. This environment now has to be completely clean. This is our original OEM pad with our insulator, so we have to take this off and then fit it to our new pad. And you'll see when you get the pads that they're actually notched ready to receive the insulator in place. Now, there's one on both sides. So this pad's already done, so we're ready to go. Obviously, put them in the way they're supposed to be. I know that sounds redundant, but it's very important. We've got the pads seated together, and you're gonna slide them in together to make sure they go in correctly, so they'll just slide straight into the brake caliper. That keeps it nice and easy than trying to do one pad and then the other. So we can unhook this now because we need to hold the brake pads in place. Our brake pins have already been cleaned, polished with a scotch brite pad, so it's spotless, cleaned with brake cleaner, so we're ready to install this. Now as this plate is a little bit springy, you're gonna have to push on the pads a little bit to seat the pin. And what you wanna do is push the pin through, notch the pin, and before you use the Allen, visually check that the pin is located all the way through into the receiving hole. Once that's in and seated, you can turn this in just a couple turns to make sure it's seated correctly. Now we're gonna to go to the back, push a little bit on those pins, seat that correctly, and then we'll turn this pin all the way in and make sure it seats. Now, at this point, we have no leverage to be able to tighten them, so put that all the way to the start back here and finish it. Make sure you do that by hand and both are tight. Go back and recheck that it is hand tight and it will be hand tight. Now we've got both the pads there, what we've got to do is make sure that these are apart and simply just by using your fingers you can push them apart. Now we're ready to go ahead and reinstall on the rotor. So.
ready to go. Put the bolts in, we'll tighten the bolts. We'll put those bolts to manufacturer's torque specs. When that is done, we'll then get an Allen tool and we'll go ahead and set the torque on the pins themselves. Make sure that's done. And then we'll swap sides and do this whole thing over again. So now the job is complete, we've put the brakes in, we've tightened everything to the torque specs as per the shop manual, so we're pretty much done with this job. Now, as always with every show, we give you a conclusion, and in this one, because we rely so heavily on the front brakes, we want to cover a couple points here very carefully. One is that when you change from a different pad to another pad, you should always clean the rotors, whether that's with emery cloth, another abrasive material, or take the rotors and have them sandblasted. And when you get all that done, you must be meticulous with brake cleaner to make sure the rotors are completely clean and grease-free. Secondly, there is a specific bed-in procedure that will come with the pads that you install. So before you go out and ride aggressively with the bike, you have to follow that procedure to the letter. So educate yourself as to what that is what's involved in the procedure and execute it perfectly. That way, because we depend so much on our front brakes, you'll have no problems from that point on. So please make sure you follow those instructions carefully. Now, lastly, you saw us install some carbon metallic pads on this bike because we're gonna take this to the track. So there's a very specific procedure we must follow with performance friction to make sure those pads, the pads bed in correctly. So we'll fill you in more about that on that particular show. So we'll see you next time.